Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, this is going to be a video on how to extend the capabilities of the Super Nintendo Classic to run Sega Genesis uh, games and other consoles games. To do this you're going to need RetroArch um, and to get everything complete it's best if you go and get yourself uh, this nice little HMOD set. A HMOD is basically just a, a modification file. So uh, KMFD Manic has created a, a large repository. As you can see, it's 239 megabytes in size. You don't need it all. You can pick and choose what you do need. So I'm going to show you what to do in order to get it to run uh, Sega, um, Genesis, or Mega Drive games, uh, or, and, and Nintendo games as well, the, SNE, uh, the NES games. So if we look back down here, we've plugged in the Super Nintendo directly to the USB right here we don't have the uh, on the go adapter plugged in because we want to communicate directly to the super nintendo so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to download yourself this uh, hmod set now i've already done this here so i'm just going to minimize this window and i'm going to open up the hackcheat ce tool which is right here Next, I am going to want to also open the folder from K, uh, KMFD Manic, and I'm going to want to add some modules. So to do this, you go to the modules and install extra modules. Now, the minimum that we really need are as follows. So I'm just going to quickly look. Let me see if I can just better position this. There we go. So I'm going to be looking for the RetroArch mod, or HMod, which is the main one. Now, I know that it is actually titled 170, so it's just down here. So it's KM RetroArch 1702718 HMod. Now, depending on when you're viewing this, it may be a more recent HMod, but the file size is approximately just under 2 megabytes, so I'm going to drag that one in. You drag it in, it automatically ticks it. So that is going to actually install the RetroArch engine. Uh, you will need cores if you want to run many different uh, many different console uh, ROMs. So what I'm looking for now is the Genesis core. So I'm just going to look in here and see what I can find. Yes, here we go. KM Genesis Plus GX. I'll drag that in. And that's going to allow me to run Genesis games. Now, with just these two, I should be able to run NES games. It actually says in the description here. And I should be able to run Genesis games. Mega CD games as well, by the look of things. And, and many others. <laughs> Sega Master System. So, just with these two additional ones, it's going to be possible to play some extra games. So, if I click on OK, it then wants me to put the SNES Classic SNES Classic for you uh, US people, which I know I have a lot of people from the US watching. We just put it in that mode there where it automatically starts to copy those extra files onto the memory, the internal memory. So this shouldn't take too long to do. Once it's done, uh, the Super Nintendo will then be capable of playing some Genesis games and it will be capable of playing. Uh, the NES games, but of course we'll need to transfer some games on there So I'm just going to go find some games and I'll do that. Let's see. I know I've got Lots on my uh, on my system, but just let me have a look and see what I've got here. Just taking a while. It's likely because it's uh, transferring those H mods over. Okay. So I'm going to copy them from my other uh, USB drive that I've uh, already done in the past. So just let me grab some of those. So I believe that. That's PC Engine. We don't want a PC Engine game. Ah, so this is one of them. So this is called Atomic Runner. 
and this is an MD game. That's the uh, file extension. So I'm just going to drag that into the, the window. And as you can see, it's given me a nice uh, Sega Genesis or Mega Drive cartridge icon. I'm going to hit Google. It's in that button, should browse for, there we go. I'll use that image. I'm just going to change the view here and say group by app type. And then what that does is that shows Nintendo Super NES games and Sega Genesis games. So you can see I've just got the, the three on there so far. I'm also going to get, just let me minimize that. I'm also going to get uh, another game. I'll get an NES game as well, just for completion. So I'm going to grab that from the, let's see, I can't remember, it might be H or M. Okay, so I've got some Sega Master System ones there. In fact, let me, let me put a Sega Master System one on as well. So again, I'm just going to copy it into the window. There it is, I'll hit Google. So one thing that's nice about this, you're not gonna to have to worry about any any brackets or any strange characters as, as you would have done initially. It's pretty much a, a drag and drop seamless exercise now of dragging your ROMs in, browsing for a, a artwork, and then copying things over to the USB drive, um, or rather just, just exporting the games and, and creating the linked games. Let me see if I can get a get an NES game. I'll do a quick search because obviously um, we do don't know that Mario is... there we go. So we've got plenty on here. So I will just open Super Mario 3, which of course I've got the original 2, like most people. Drag it into the window. It copies that one over. Click on Google. And there we go, any one of these nice images. So you can see it says new apps there, but I guess if I group by app type, it should label them as Nintendo NES, which it does. Okay, so now we've added some, some extra ROMs and we've, we've got the artwork working. We'll click on export games and we'll choose um, the games folder of the USB uh, device that I'm going to be linking them on. Okay. So as you can see, I've got an unsorted folder and I've got some games in there. I'm gonna put them all in the root. You can make folders and you can have nice icons for the folders as well, but I'm, I'm just gonna put them um, in the root here. So I'll just drag them to the root and I'll get rid of the unsorted folder. Then I click on okay. And it says, do you wanna make linked games? For those that don't know, this just means that instead of actually um, copying the games from one folder on the USB, drive to another folder on the USB drive, it's just going to reference the orig original folder. And there we go, copy it over the top. That's it. I've added a few more games. I've hopefully flashed uh, RetroArch and enabled it to play some Sega Genesis games, Master System games and NES games. That's all very quick actually in under 10 minutes. So I'm going to just power down Super Nintendo Classic. I'm going to take out the USB, plug it in there, there we go. Okay so that's in and ready. So if I switch this on now, we're going to have the Hatchy splash screen. And I'll show you how to get that custom splash screen that you actually saw there in the next video. 
Now I'm using a Wii Classic controller here just because for some of the more advanced ROMs you're going to want those analog sticks but for here I'll just show you what we've got. So we've got some Super Nintendo games which I added in my last video and in this one here we've got a Sega Mega Drive game. Now all going well we should be able to launch this. And there we go. Now to show you that it's actually using RetroArch we can press start and select and then you can see the RetroArch menu which has a lot of advanced uh, kind of settings in there that you can play about with if you know what you're doing but if not don't worry about hitting start and select just enjoy playing the games don't forget as well that down and select on your Super Nintendo controller will go back to the main menu we'll try a Master System game now which it said that it was compatible with that uh, GX Plus core that we added there we go and I think we added an NES game as well so let's try that absolutely fantastic I like it when videos go to plan so thank you very much for watching hopefully you can now have a USB modded Super Nintendo Classic you can also add some H mods try not to add too many at once there is a problem when you try to copy too many H mods across at once something to do with the file size of the the kind of image that it's flashing so just copy a few over at a time uh, I tend to maybe copy four or five over at a time obviously each H mod can do different things run uh, different cores uh, can add different features to your Super Nintendo. Okay guys, thanks for watching. My next video will be about creating a custom splash screen which you saw briefly in this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. I'll try to answer as many comments as possible but this really is the most simple way yet to modify your uh, Super Nintendo with USB host. Thanks guys, have a great day.